There is no substitute for a well-written illustrated log of a cruise or travelogue. I have now done quite a few logs and the techniques have evolved over the years. It is time consuming to do, but it can be fun and provides a record that becomes increasingly valuable as you get older. I undertook to produce some articles on this subject, but decided that some matters were best dealt with by video tutorial, hence this series. When we visited New Zealand, we usually made a few trips by car using the excellent motels. Sometimes we have written up the trips as a travelogue. The inclusion of maps showing the route we took is an important part, and in the video, those tracks need to be animated. The source of the maps can vary, but the most commonly available is Google Maps or Google Earth, and that is what I will use for this demonstration. This is the opening screen of Google Earth, and we have set the search to Auckland. Then we zoom into the area of interest, the Coromandel Peninsula, which is one of the best kept tourist secrets in New Zealand. It is an easy day's drive from Auckland. Here I am indicating the route we took on our first day from Auckland to Whitianga. Having found the image we need, we transfer it to the clipboard using the alt print screen technique that we've demonstrated in previous videos. Then open a photo processor, in my case Affinity Photo, and put the image in place. You could use any quality photo processor for this job, so I will not go into the detail processes, which will vary between them. So, with the pen tool selected, set the colour we want to something like pale blue. Then select the line width to something such as 5 pixels. I also like to set the pen to smart mode as this is simple to use and accurate enough for the purpose. Is this where we turn left? Let's zoom out and have a look. OK, it is, so let's carry on. This is a process you have seen several times before, so I will speed it up until we get near the end. So there we are, it really is that easy. We have reached Whitianga. Zoom out to see the overall result. Save it as a working document for your photo editor, then export the image so that it can be used in a text document. As expected, the first day is usually an outrun to the area you want to explore and takes place on relatively main roads. Now we're going to do something interesting and do some trekking through the bush on day two. The roads are less clear, but Google Earth has a few tricks that make it easy to find them. So let's start with Google Earth and zoom into our area of interest. There is a range of hills and small mountains that runs down the centre of Coromandel known as the Coromandel Ranges. There is one main road across the top which you can see on the map, but there are also a number of tracks across what are known in New Zealand as unsealed roads. These are basically well-rolled gravel tracks. 
Our journey goes south from Wittianga and then across the track roughly here and then back north to Coromandel Town. As we got there early, we went a bit further north to one of our favourite places, the Driving Creek Railway. So we start by opening the search box in Google Earth and typing Driving Creek. Click quickly to stop it zooming in. Now, and this is important, type U to make sure that Google Earth is looking vertically downwards, then type the letter N to make sure that the map is set to north up. Now, we have a look to see if Google Earth is aware of the track we're looking for. To do this, we use Street View. Just drag the little man slightly to the left and all the roads that can be seen appear in blue. And behold, there is the track. So, we know that Google Earth is aware of the track, but at this level of zoom we cannot see it. We have to zoom in until the track is visible. Clearly we're going to have to make some kind of template composed of tiles so that we can draw the track accurately. Adjust the view so that the beginning of the track where it leaves the main road can be seen. Once again, use the letter N and the letter U to make sure that the map is north up and the view is vertical. Now use Alt Print Screen to place a copy of the screen image on your clipboard. Open your photo processor and load the image. In Affinity the command is new from clipboard, but that will depend on which photo processor you are using. All that needs to be done is to save it to a safe place using a sensible name and the suffix A. Back to the photo editor and delete that image. Now return to Google Earth, identify something on the left and scroll across making sure that the feature you identified remains in view so that the panorama stitching can work. Now repeat the process but add the suffix B to the file name. We've done this in earlier videos, so I will fade out and return when all the tiles are ready. OK, once we have an empty screen in the photo processor, we stitch the panorama together. Add all the tiles and let the program work its magic. It is worth saving at this stage before going on. Now we zoom out in the photo processor until we can see the whole area. Here is the template we have made. We zoom in to the start of the journey and have a look at the detail. It could do with some increased brightness and some more contrast at this point. How you achieve that will depend on your photo editor. In Affinity I added a levels adjustment then a brightness and contrast adjustment to produce a much better result. 
But if we pan to the upper left corner, these adjustments have clearly made things too bright. It is necessary to mask off this area from the adjustments. In Affinity, I put the two adjustments into a group which is labelled Lightness and a mask is applied to the group. A brush using a 50% opacity black paints on the mask layer to soften the effects of the adjustments while leaving them fully effective at the bottom right. If you do not have the tools to do this masking, do not worry, it will just be a little trickier to paint the path through the bush. Now we will make what I call locators. These make it easier to adjust the size and position of the template when we add it to the main layer. This has to be done at roughly 50% opacity, so we need some strong, easily visible features. Here, using the pen with about 10 pixel width and the smart mode, I drew a bright yellow line down the main road. Now up to the top left and a similar bright yellow path along the main road till it reaches the track through the bush. Then the two curves layers that represent the two yellow paths are grouped and named locators. We'll see how they're used in a few minutes. Now back to the point where we turned off the main road onto the bush track. Using the pen tool in smart mode, set to pale blue and a width of about 10 pixels, we simply trace the path across the track. This is very repetitive, so I will fade out and come back near the point where we rejoin the main road. There is no reason why we should not continue the path all the way to Driving Creek, but for the time being the bright yellow locators are in the way, so we switch them off. People cleverer than me might be able to duplicate that yellow line and recolour it instead of doing this again. Now zoom out to view the whole template. All the layers showing are put into a single group which is called Overlay.
Because so many tiles were stitched together, the document is huge with a width of over 7,000 pixels. But the base on which we will apply the template was a screen grab, so it will be about 1,600 pixels wide. So to make things easier to handle, the template is resized to 2,000 pixels. Normally, when adding an overlay, you can copy flattened, but in this case we will need the layers in the overlay group, so we use an ordinary copy then switch to the base layer image and paste. It is necessary to zoom right out to see the resize handles and the overlay is resized until it is approximately in position then zoomed back in until we can see the bottom right hand corner. After putting the overlay roughly into place, its opacity is reduced to about 50% and exact positioning occurs. Now, back to the top left, and after switching the locators back on, repeat process being careful to use resize handles without moving the whole overlay so that the bottom right does not move. Once satisfied with the position Return the opacity of the template to 100% and switch off the locators. They have done their job. Looking back at the bottom right corner, we need to finish off the path all the way to Wittianga. So, the template opacity is reduced again and a new pixel layer added. OK, the pen created a new curve layer so the pixel layer was not needed and can be deleted. As we draw the path, it is clear there is a colour match issue, but tweaking the colour wheel soon puts that right. Now, zooming out, we can see the whole route. Check that the locator group is switched off and remove the lightness and panorama layers by switching them off as well, leaving the track correctly located on the map pace. 
then it is simply a matter of saving in the native file format of the photo processor and exporting a JPG copy for use in the logs. But before we finish there is one advantage of using Google Earth. As you drive along a track through the bush you cannot possibly stop every five minutes to take photos, but using Street View you can find lovely images which can be captured using Alt Print Screen as we have done already in this video The yellow lead line added by Street View can be removed in some photo editors. In Affinity and the Photoshop range, a process called inpainting will usually remove it. That is application specific, so you will have to consult your own help. Shots like this help to convey the frontier feel of a small towns like Coromandel. Zooming out allows aerial views which would be quite impossible without a drone camera. Later in this series we will animate a land based track for use in a video, but for the time being that's all. Thank you for watching, I hope it was interesting.